So I've been using Flask Equal Alchemy for a very long time now. Now Flask Equal Alchemy is basically an ORM to automate SQL processes, right? Now the only thing that's bad about Flask Equal Alchemy and really any other ORM in Python is that I absolutely hate them. Like they are the worst things that have possibly happened to web development with Python itself. So I decided, you know what, it's time for me to take charge. So instead of me having to rely on crappy ORMs, I have decided to create my very own ORM. Now, my ORM is called Yasa Alchemy, and you guys can even install it via a pip command. I even have it right over here. Python package. Beautiful, right? Now, I'm going to teach you guys how I actually created this entire library and how you guys can also run it. So let's just start the video. All right, so before we actually make our ORM, let me first explain to you guys how ORMs work so you can understand my thought process. So let's take this example code over here, right? So over here we have a class called user, and then we have a username and a password, which is a database column. So all that's happening is I'm making a table called user, and then I'm making a column called username, and I, another column called password. So all that's happening is, is that there's um, a class that reads this code and rewrites it as a SQL statement. Now, anyone with some SQL knowledge and 15 brain cells should be able to do this. I only have five, but I think I can make, do this. So now let's actually get into the code. All right, so the code for the actual package itself is like 42 lines long. All right, that's mainly because one, I'm, you know, that smart and two because I actually uh, the only thing my ORM right now does is create tables I can't insert data into it uh, but I'm gonna hopefully get that done sooner or later so let's go through our code right so the first thing we do is just go ahead and import mysql's connector and pymysql so the reason why we're importing pymysql is because sometimes the connector fails so that's why we're just going with this as well all right then the next thing I have is a parent class so my parent class is for the setup it will take the host, the user, the password, and the database and just connect it over. All right, then after that, the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and have a child class. This child class is called table. So the reason why I have the child class is because I want the table actions and the CRUD actions, which I haven't done yet, to be in a separate classes so it's more organized, like how SQL Alchemy does it. All right, so inside of table, I have the simple constructor, which is the exact same as the setup class. Then the next thing I do is go ahead and grab the table name, right? So you would specify it. And I'm gonna show you guys how my library works afterwards. So you specify your table name, and then it has this string, all right, that I'm going to execute at the end of the class. So, and it's gonna add create table if not exist. And it's gonna have an opening bracket because you know, because when it says create table not exists, then I insert my columns. Now, MySQL requires you to have at least one column, right? So what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna go dot make column, and you're gonna have your column name and the type, such as a var char, integer, etc., etc. Okay? And once you're done all of that, you're gonna go ahead and commit your changes. So I call that publish db. I decided not to do dot commit because I felt like that would be copying off of my SQL. So instead what I did was I just changed some words of it, which is plagiarism, but whatever. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually use my library. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just create your own database and make sure it's in MySQL, obviously. So I've used YasaDB and that's the name of my database. Uh, I chose this name because I think I'm just frankly too good for regular Python names, right? I think that I should just create more and more packages and I have my own virtual monopoly within Python. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and install Yasa Alchemy. So to install Yasa Alchemy, go pip3, or pip, I guess, if you're on Windows. Pip3 install Yasa Alchemy. And boom, we've now downloaded our package. All right, now the first thing we're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and connect them to our database. So make a variable called db and set that equal to yasa alchemy dot table. All right, and then add two pairs of brackets and inside of here we're gonna specify specific things such as our host. So for me, it's just localhost. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna do is just have user 
set that equal to root. And then we're going to have our password and set that equal to, well, you guessed it, new password. All right. And then we're going to have our database. And that's going to be the database name, right? So I wrote Yasa DB in case if you guys forgot. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead. Whoops. Yeah. The next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create a class. So call the class whatever you want, but because you want your class to be like, just make it the name that you want for your table because that's going to make it a lot easier, right? Class, call it users. All right. And remember, this class is going to be a static class. So the a static class is just a class that doesn't have any constructors, by the way. So inside of here, I'm just going to go ahead and create a database. Like I'm going to have the argument of the database, right? And what it's going to do is it's going to take in the, ta the, the, what's it called? It's going to take in the database that I created here. And it's going to take that as its argument. First thing we're going to do is just go ahead and connect to our database. This way we can, you know, create the table. The next thing we're going to want to do is just make our table. So we're going to go db.make underscore table. All right. And we're going to call it users. And the next thing we're going to want to do is create two columns, username and password. So we're going to go db.make underscore column. All right. Wait, that's not the spelling of column. Call up. There we go. And we're going to first of all specify the name. So our name is going to be username. And the type is going to simply be a varchar. Varchar. 5,000. 5, so I don't actually know how to make like properties like how SQL Alchemy does. So I decided to just go with a raw string that you would specify. Uh, not it doesn't. It's not the best, but it does the trick. Make and then we're gonna go db dot make column, and it's going to be password. And once again, it's gonna be a a varchar five thousand. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and just publish our database. Db dot publish db. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're just going to call upon the users class users dot create db. Create, and it's going to take in the argument of database. Now let's just go ahead and run that. So as you can see, nothing happened, which is in this case a good thing. Now if I were to just open up my MySQL workbench, all right, and then I go over here, okay, and I open up YasaDB. As you can see, we now have the users table. All right, we have our username and we have our password. All right, so that is how you guys use my Python packet, right? So that's the, con the video in its general. This is just like a conclusion end card. So what I showed you guys was, was how to create tables. And this is actually how you do it in Flask SQL Alchemy, right? So I tried to create similar things like with the classes and inheritance, but obviously it wasn't as good as the people over at SQL Alchemy that made it. I also don't mean anything about like SQL Alchemy being inherently bad. It, it does have its ups and downs, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad framework per se. Now, if you guys want, you guys can help contribute to this project. I won't really be, you know, focused on this project as I have other work to do. But if you guys, if that's something you guys want to do, help me with, then I'd be happy to, you know, work together with you. All right. So that's it for today's video. Have a nice day.